Jul på Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 6, Hvis du ikke kan lide røgen, which translates roughly to, you know, yeah, it's that saying, you know, if, I think in English you say, if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. In Danish we say, if you can't take the smoke, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is the, the actual Danish phrase, not just a turn on the phrase. Anyway, another episode I love. Spoilers for these first six episodes. This is one of my favorites. Um, yeah, so we open... I, I, yes, before I forget, I love that Like the episode starts with, you know, okay, so Danny's going uh, to go back to jail. Um, they're getting evicted. And then, the th you know, by the end of the episode, they're not getting evicted as long as you know, the the money is on the way, and Danny isn't going back to jail. However, Anna is going to have to spend more time there, which is treated as almost as bad, if not worse. Uh, but yeah, so the the um, yeah, they're they're trying to hide from Greta. They think that's her. Turns out to be Andy, who keeps ringing the doorbell, and yeah, you know the they're they're hiding, and, and Danny suggests, you know, can't you just deal with Greta the way that you usually deal with Jehovah's Witnesses? And he's like, ah, I'm out of I'm out of acid. <laughs> Holy crap! And let's see, yeah, and and you know. Sometimes a joke is funnier if you know exactly where it's going. He's like, okay, we get, we have to be quiet. I'll tell Vivian. And like everyone watching is like, if you open the door, she's going to shout. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah, she shouts. And then the two, and, and then I think it, first it's Danny. He's like, we're not home. And you know, for a second we're like, Danny, for the love of, you know, and, and then Stuart joins in. Because, you know, yeah, like father, like son, they are incredibly stupid, you know, both of them. And, of course, you know, at shouting, you know, we're not home, you know, obviously, Matt LeBlanc responds, well, is it okay if I wait? And, yeah, and, and Stuart is like, okay, I have an idea. We can, we can convince Anna not to take you back to prison. We'll just show him that we have a wonderful home. And Danny's like, where do we have that? <laughs> and, yeah, you know, Stuart, and, and yeah, Stuart says, here, school, you know, right here, come on, you know. Which, again, me and other, you know, teenage boys at the time were saying way too much. Um, but, yeah, and they put up decorations, and we get what... I think might be my single favorite like sight gag in the entire show where you know um, Danny gets like this this switchblade that he's you know like flipping around and you know stabbing the the wall and then he very d d tenderly hangs what do y'all call the reef 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 Wreath, I think it's wreath, you know, on there. And just this, because, like, that's supposed to be, like, this, aw, Christmas, what a, what a, you know, lovely thing. But he used the switchblade, and, and he's, like, he's handling it like he's, you know, he knows that this is not the first, like, there's a lot of things Danny, Stu, Danny Stardust is no good at at all, but apparently he's very good with a switchblade. And let's see. Oh right, yeah, that that happens a little later in the episode. Anyway, but yeah, they're, they're hanging up decorations, and we get another joke hinting at Stuart going to other countries, and uh, yeah, engaging in in sex. Yeah. Having sex with, you know, without consent. Anyway, um, let's see. And he makes a joke about 
See, I don't even know. Is is that a thing? In in Danish, we have something called Yudeke, which the like the direct translation would be J Jewish cookies. Okay, there there's apparently yeah, it says here Jewish cookies. Oh right, yeah, Snickerdoodle-esque. That's that's accurate. Yeah, and yeah, it was made by Jewish bakeries in Copenhagen all the way back in the 17th century. And yeah, Stewart makes a joke about gas oven, which you know maybe to help make up for for the Palestine joke. This is, yeah, and I love that even when baking a cake. Like, he's like, you know, okay, so, no way in hell am I, you know, is it like, oh, what was it, like, seven, 700 milliliters of water. Water. I don't drink water. So he pours liquor in instead, and it's like, oh, that is, that's not going to work the way you think it will. <laughs> Imagine being that averse to water. Like, because in his mind, he's like, water, what am I, a child? I don't drink water. Just, Yeah. And the the thing with the, you know, he he grabs a, a thing that, you know, yeah, it has a white powdery substance. And, you know, the audience, oh, that's, that's not what you think it is, Stuart. That's most definitely, like, heroin or cocaine or something like that, you know. And, and the look on Danny's like, oh, you know, just, you know, they, they prank, like, his face is doing the, the reverse zoom thing, the, the, Tracking zoom thing, you know, just uh, what are you what are you doing? <laughs> well, just you know, flour for the for the for the cookies. What are you talking about? You know, of course I'm gonna. You know, that's not regular flour. It's not even self raising flour. That's potato flour for when you make potatoes. How stupid do you think I am? You don't bake potatoes. Of course you do. Have you ever heard of a baked potato? One of the one of my favorite exchanges, verbal exchanges in the entire, and one that actually translates to English, so that's very nice. Yeah, really, really funny. And and finally, he does accept it, though he does, you know, he like puts a finger in it, and it tastes, you know, I, I guess he's just not very used to like heroin or cocaine. Like I, I hear that it has a very distinct, like you can usually recognize it, but whatever. No, I can I can buy that that that's probably not his like he's he's usually it's usually f various forms of liquor, Fnatabanke, which like it took me forever to realize he's talking about Fnatabanke, which is like French something or other, which it's it's very funny to me that like I've seen like. Ah, crap, I forget which one. One of the Michael Caine movies. Wait, is it maybe one of the Batman movies? He mentions drinking that. And at first I didn't recognize because he pronounces it, you know, it's a it's a British thing. They don't, they have a lot of issues with the French. You know, 100 years of war will do that too. So they, they refuse to say Fernet Branca. They say Fernet Branca, which, yeah, they, they, but yeah, um, Let's see, and and it is also just like it is very funny. This idea, you know, potato flour and baked potato, <laughs> like this not they're not the same thing at all. You know that one doesn't necessarily go with the other at all. But yeah, um, yeah, and we go to the the Muslims, and they're talking about the the terrorism that are going to do in Arabic so again like making this connection which sadly a lot of people when they hear Arabic spoken they think oh terrorism like 9-11 you know and it's like it's it's yeah it's it's a it's a horrible stereotype it's you know it's actually a, a very lovely language and yeah, um, Stuart sees Tove out the and and says, you know, uh, what what is that in English? I guess uh, thanks thanks for last time or yeah something you know takfasis, which I 
think was from the radio. It, it's not the first time we hear him say that, certainly. You know, they try to work those things in because, you know, this advent calendar wouldn't exist if not for the for the radio stuff that Honest Madison did. Which is where, you know, Stuart Stardust first appeared. And Greta spots the the Muslims working in the garage and really reveals some incredibly intense racism, you know, saying stuff about you know, it's it's a good thing for for black people to work without pay. And it's like I mean <laughs> I'm not that's that's it feels like self parody. I, I honestly I think I've probably heard worse in the years since but for two thousand three at least like mainstream perception of racism that sounds like just yeah, you know, make, making fun of racism. It, it can't really be mistaken for, for actual racism, which, you know, other things on the show feel like actual racism. And let's see. You know, and that's also like, that's the thing. She's okay with there being Muslims as long as they're working for free. That's a good thing. Which, I mean, I feel like they're also doing a thing where, you know, oh, you know, that's how she opens herself up to terrorism is by being okay with if them as long as they're, they seem weak, which, again, is really not a good way to, to handle, yeah, it's, it's, the show does, doesn't handle racism the, the best. Um, yeah, and he offers, you know, a, one of the one of the hot dogs, and it's you. Is like, you know what? I'm not hungry anymore. I don't think I'll ever be hungry again. Thank you, Stuart. And yeah, so yeah, he when he gets back up into the kitchen, there's a lot of smoke up there, and I like that the different, you know. Yeah, um, he's, he, yeah, Stuart himself says, you know, oh, it's like having an audience with the Queen, which, you know, yeah, if you, if you don't know, now you'll know the, the, yeah, the Danish Queen, I don't know if she still does, but at least at the time, known for, for smoking, you know, quite, quite a lot. And Danny says it's like being with Dole, which, you know, I'm guessing his, yeah, his, his, like, drug hookup or something. So there it it's presumably, like, weed smoke instead of tobacco. And let's see. Um, yeah. Um, then when Randy comes up... Uh, hold on. Is that... I'm not sure how to say... Oh, right, yeah. Boarding school. It's like being at boarding school, which, yeah, again... A lot of smoking there, and when Anna comes up, he says it's like being collective. I don't. Hold on, maybe Google can come through one more time. Collective in English. The collective, uh, a commune. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, and and yeah, Danny comes in with the the tree, and it's like. I mean, yeah, technically that is it. It was a, a pine tree. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, you, you technically did the assignment. I, I can't really argue with that. It just there's no there's no uh, pine pine needles left on it. But you know, and he's like, you know, oh, um, it fell off a truck. It was given to me by an elf-like man who said that his wife already bought one and she's sick, so they don't have room for both. And and Stuart is like, we don't have a Christmas tree. Uh, yeah, what do y'all call that in English? Um, you call it f foot for a Christmas tree, but yeah, you know, and, and it's, uh, I, you know, he comes through and they, they attach the thing and it's like, 
he took the the wooden cross of like I mean the the name on is Bula. That sounds like a, a kid's dog to me or something. So yeah, he he removed the cross from the grave of some kid's dog. Just oh my god. And yeah, and then Randy shows up and they argue some more and then they have another joke that really doesn't translate well, but yeah, you know, Anna shows up and it's like, ah, we're we're singing a song. Uh, you know, and yeah, the original lyric is like Yeah, it it honestly it's been so many years since I actually understood it because it's like at least one like really old word that nobody uses anymore. But yeah, you know, slightly rever rewarded by Danny. You know, oh, we're you know we're singing about arguing and being noisy, and Randy is like, "Are you, are you insane?" And and you know the covers uh, are ah crap. Hold on. I'll I'll reword it to make it work. Um, if I can, crap. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? I actually I'm not entirely sure. There's a, a completely workable way to translate that into English, but but yeah, you know. She's she's saying you must be crazy, and he's like, ah, it's crazy how good a time we're having. And I love the reaction, you know, Danny's like, don't you, you know, you gotta, you know, don't screw this up for us. And Randy's like, just, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, it's very, very funny. Apple. <laughs> and on it, actually buys it, you know, there's like a second or two where he's like, I see what's going on here. The two of you, you are trying. You're trying to come together as a family, and it's just lovely, and it's something I want to be a part of, you know, and now he's going to come by all the time. And the, the show, the, the episode ends on the note that having a social worker around you all the time is roughly equivalent to being in prison and or evicted. <laughs> Which, like, yeah, some, sometimes you get the sense that Honest Madison is not the biggest fan of social workers. And, yeah, the, it's, yeah, the, stew, the, the speaker comes on again. And <laughs> as he's wrapping up, you know, Danny goes, an apple. And Stuart goes, damn right, apple. And the speaker's like, yeah, apple. Shh. <laughs> Just... Yeah, the the fact that they're so happy about this this apple is very funny and just yeah. And that is it for this one. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go use a switchblade to hang up a wreath, and I will catch you tomorrow.